the dead dive. What, Captain Hollister? Everybody's dead dive. What, Top Hunter? What, Selby? Not Chen. He's dead dive. Everybody is dead. Everybody is dead dive. Hello everyone, welcome back to Everybody's Dead Dave, our Red Dwarf Review podcast hosted by myself, Adam Martin, and as always my co-host, Phil Hawkins. That is him, we are in series 8, the final season of I guess what you all call the, well various things, the original run, the classic run, the BBC run, series 8 basically. We're on episode 2, which is back in the red part 2, the middle part of this three part opener, and I think we said last week this is the first like multi-parter real, by name, isn't it? Yeah. First time we've had a something part 1, something That's part it, 2, yeah. and even a something part 3. I know, very exciting stuff. Um, if you are brand new, as we always say when it's like interconnected, especially since this is a part 2, at the very least, I think we recommend you start with last week, at the very least, if you're maybe familiar with this show. Um, if you're not, I I am a newer Red Dwarf fan. This is my very first watch through of the show. And Phil, you've seen this show before, right? You know what this is I all have. about. You I've know what's I've seen cracking. it many yeah. times before. Exactly. So, and we'll continue that journey then with Series 8, Episode 2. And I have a little uh, synopsis which reads as follows. The crew are in big trouble aboard the resurrected Red Dwarf with the freshly resurrected Captain Hollister. And they find themselves standing trial for stealing and crashing a Starbug. Crichton faces reprogramming and his factory settings restored, and, R- and Rimmer uses some confidential files and some positive viruses to further his own gain. So there's a there's a that's a lot going on, you know, a lot of threads going on. And uh, where this episode starts off actually is not in the like little cell that Rimmer and Lister are in in part one. It starts off with like a little a little recap essentially. We get to hear the original Red Dwarf fe- theme, which I always love. You know that slower rendition of it. And um, Red Dwarf itself in these shots is now rendered in CGI. Yes, it is. Which, and um, I don't know. Have you noticed uh, anything about it yet? What the CG? Well, just just the ship in general, and the. Sh- I mean, it they looks... did mention it in in the dialogue last time that the ship is different um, and is has a different configuration. Have you yeah, noticed? Yeah, I that... thought it looked. I don't know what the word is. Less. Less like bulky, I guess. It looks yeah. more like streamlined in a way. It's at longer. Least from what we saw. I th- and yeah. I think it doesn't have that big rock at the bottom. No, it's weird. And I mean, the C- the CG itself, like, it's it's fine. Even for like, you know, 1999 standards, it looks good. But I, don't, I, I mean, I think we've said before, I always prefer the models. It would have been nice to see the old Red Dwarf model again. But, yeah, I think at this you know, point, it... And the old model had actually been destroyed, I think. Oh, really? <laughs> well, they broke it, I think. And that was what oh, inspired no them to do the going on to Starbug. I think oh, I read it was, that. But it, right. That's what breaking it inspired them to do that. Oh, let's let's go and just have them on Starbug for a couple of years. I mean, it is a massive prop. So I imagine the potential for it to get damaged was was quite high. Um, but we have a little recap of the events of part one, and it's I think it's very much in vain. Was it like series two and uh, series two? You know where Holly's doing the recaps in a way. It reminded me a lot of that. Mm. Yeah, and again a jab to continuity when there's that little text, you know, saying how uh, Red Dwarf's been resurrected. How did this happen? And it's just like Smeg knows. They're not really <laughs> bothered in explaining the <laughs> the details. Yeah. Um, and we start off in the captain's office, Rimmer's in, doing his the Rimmer salute. Nice to see that. Even more exaggerated, it seems, than than we've ever seen it before. I love the little floaty bit, you know, at the end, and he floats it yeah. down gradually. Yeah. That's a new one. Reserve, what did he say? Reserved for only, like, the most important people or something like that. Like a wafting leaf in the wind, just gradually making its way to the floor. Yes, exactly. And of course, from part one, the purpose of this is Rimmer has these uh, these files to hopefully, you know, weasel his way up in the in the captain's favor. What did you think of this whole this whole scene, this opener? Uh, I really yeah, I enjoyed it. It's good to see Captain Hollister again and him getting a bit more to do. We haven't I don't think before this season we'd seen him since maybe season two. I think in flashbacks. Possibly. Yeah, it's, it's um, been a very long maybe time. Been series one. I can't, I can't quite remember, but he he has. Uh, I I just really 
enjoy his character and it was great mm. seeing him play off of Rimmer here um and Rimmer play off of him and that in yeah it was it's it was just really yeah really fun i like the way that obviously carrying on the plot wise from last week we get Rimmer using the information that Lister has given him the about mm. and it starts off like the drive plates you know i yes. he points out that there's a problem with the drive plates which is of course what killed all the crew originally exactly and, gets to look like he's really smart and has found out this problem that nobody else had found out um, and worm his way up into potentially getting made an officer. Yes. I like as well what you were saying about them bouncing like towards the end when he gives the captain the various items. I couldn't help but notice, I don't know if you saw it, when he gives him the muffin for the anniversary, did you notice that the rapper said Tesco all over it? I didn't know. <laughs> I just I just caught the logo and I was like, wow, they literally went down to Tesco. But I mean, you know, maybe that was part of the joke. But and I'm certain. I mean, if you if you're listening to this and you think I'm, I mean, please double check. But I am almost certain that I saw that familiar Tesco logo all over that rapper on the muffin. Well, maybe maybe Tesco's has opened up a branch on jmc mining ships to supply the to crew be... uh and somewhere on deck i don't know 26 there's a small little tesco's express i mean to be fair with the size of tesco would it would it really surprise you phil that they no. made it all that way into space um and what was the other one the uh, the anus soothing cream or whatever it was for piles because <laughs> Rimmer can tell, of course, by the way. And and the glove, the glove as well. Like, yeah, I, it's, I don't remember that. Wait, are we, have we watched two different versions? Or was I just not paying attention? I'm So, so he gives him the muffin yeah, for the anniversary of his... Yeah, I remember the muffin. His, yeah. Talks about the anniversary. And then he gives him, and then he gives him the... Um, it's like a, it's a tube of... Um, he calls it like, an, hate say it, like anus pile cream. And he's like, oh, I can tell from the way you walk, sir. And then he says, oh, it comes with a glove. I don't remember that. And I don't, like, I have literally no recollection of that. So I don't know. I'm now wondering if we watch two different, because you do watch the Blu-ray version. Yes. And now that you've said that, I remember from the booklet, and I don't know if this is for all three, on that disc, it's all three parts of um, Back to the Red, but Back in the Red, sorry. But then at the bottom it said "Back in the Red Extended Edition." Oh, I think you watched the Extended Edition. So, may oh, okay, I maybe I got a little little bonus bit. Oh, well, you missed the anus glove. So that I missed the anus glove. I really I, yeah, weird. I've been deprived of the <laughs> anus gloves. So I'm pretty sure yeah. on LTV that wasn't that scene wasn't in there. Ah. Well, the episode was about 28 minutes long, which is oh, I guess a bit longer than 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 only 25 minutes, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Oh, well, mate, okay, well, as we go through then, if you hear me say something, you're like, I've got no idea what you're talking about, you'll just have to I, To be know. honest, I was slightly already thinking that because I was like, I don't recall a, a previously on I think you'd remember... Like, I, like you said, yeah. so I think that was added as well, so... I think you'd remember an anus glove yeah, as well, exactly. just, that, to, be, just that to be real. Was, that was the one that made me think, hold on, <laughs> I don't yeah. think I've seen but, this. Um, but Chris Barry's on top physical form with his comedy, as he ever was. Um, even his goodbye salute. But speaking of physical comedy, we then cut to Crichton, who's having <laughs> a uh, a medical examination. When he was like, "Take off your clothes," and bless him, he comes back just you know, <laughs> same same exact same outfit, but just skin coloured. So skin coloured, almost like it's an outer layer that he's taken off. But <laughs> yeah, great. To, and asking him to fill a container and it coming back with flowers and all that. That was and... a great gag. Yeah. And the, I like as well where the guy is screwing what we believe is his unscrewing what we believe is his green area and his head falls off. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, that's that's a thing. So, <laughs> yeah, it was all I, I, what I wrote is Crichton's having a medical examination and then put hilarity ensues because that's essentially what happens, isn't it? Yeah. And then um, there's the, the he has his blood pressure taken and it ends up inflating when when he's pumped. The doctor's pumping yes. the thing. It actually inflates his hand. So yeah. like a balloon and it shoots off. There's lots of really nice little funny comedy moments in that scene. Absolutely. And straight after that, we have a little Crichton Kachansky chat. And just following on, you know, it's nice to see that they're not biting at each other, which is, I know, is something we discussed before. Although I did want to ask, because I think I wrote, I'm trying to, re I think I wrote this later in my notes, but I can't quite put my finger. Oh, yes, here it is. I, if throughout this whole episode, to me at least, I wrote Kachansky feels as a character quite different in this series and i was like i can't put my finger on it hmm. um 
you know what I mean? Obviously, like, yes, she, I'm not saying she has to argue with Crichton, but he, like the minute he came through the door, she was like so sympathetic for him, which we've not really seen her show that for Crichton specifically. Yeah, it's difficult I don't know. to really Something, get a so... handle on her yet because I don't think in this series we've had much. Li- I mean, we mentioned last week that she was barely in last week. She's in a bit more this week. But thankfully, yeah, she's yeah. still not there. She's still not a focus of the episode at all. And yeah, uh, so I think it's but uh, yeah, I kind of get what you mean there. Yeah, just so- something feels different. And I'm not quite sure whether that's for the better or the worse at this point. Anyway, it just feels it just feels very different. Mm. I don't know. But, you know, I guess in the real time, it had been two years. A lot had changed and all that. So, um but after that chat, their their trial begins. Well, well, yeah, that we didn't discuss what that chat was about, and the result. Oh, of sorry, the, yes, we um, should. Yeah, result of the medical examination that uh, Crichton was undergoing is that he is classified as a woman. Yes. Um, because he hasn't got a penis. Yes. Uh, and there, there are some, there are some lines that are very much of the time. I think in this scene. That yes. I did yes. kind of slightly wince at, and there was like the oh, it's a space core directive to prevent gender ambiguity in jail, and I was like, oh, yes, okay. that was that was the one where I was like, ah, okay, there we. I mean, you know, the this nineteen ninety nine, the world was a, a yeah. very different place. Um, which I know we, we've said that numerous times, haven't we? As we've gone through this show, like there are we've had lines like that. Or about, yeah. or about similar issues. Which my note on my note, I, I I quoted that line in my notes and then just put, uh, it's just literally <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I don't it's think just there's hard, like, the, K- Kachansky's line also, um, uh, felt a bit like playing on gender stereotypes because, like, now you're a woman, it's going to mean some big changes into your behavior. I was just like, why? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, was, why? Why would, why would that, that make, make a difference? A difference? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think as we've said, it, it's just hard in for a, in like a 2022 perspective. Ob- obviously, we are keeping in mind the context of the time, but I ju- yeah, it's just one of those things in it. It's like in any like old film when they say something very uncomfortable, and you just like eh, move on, move on. Yeah. Move on. Um. But yeah, I do. Yeah, that as you said, very much lines of the time. Glad they didn't dwell on it for too long, and it wasn't a reoccurring thing. They seem to forget that plot point very quickly uh well all i'll say is don't speak too soon <laughs> oh oh I see. That. <laughs> oh boy oh boy well you're in for a treat there listeners if if i'm not speaking too soon um but um their trial begins and they uh they do consent to taking i can't was it psycho psycho something drugs Psy- was it yeah. psychoscopic something something like that, like that. and they're gonna use a a mind not the oh, mind probe. A, not the mind probe. Oh, oh God, love a mind probe in a bit of sci-fi. But um, yeah, they they consent to these. Did you? They they seem to consent to the use of these drugs quite quickly. Yeah, um, I don't know. They, if that's because they had already like were planning on breaking out. They, you know, Lister has Lister has Rimmer working for him on the outside. This is before yeah. R- that Rimmer has betrayed him, isn't it? So. Has li- he thinks he's yes. got Lister working for him. So he thinks probably he's going to escape. So yeah. they're like, oh yeah, we'll sign this. It's fine. We're going to get out. And they run away. And still Starbuck and run away or something. I'm assuming that's what their plan was. I suppose so. But um, Brimmer does go to visit. I think that's the very next scene, isn't it? He does go to visit Lister to update them on uh, on his progress. Like with what's going on in the, in the holding cell. Which... To no one's surprise, Rim is basically like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna break the promise." And this scene actually yielded my a potential funniest line, where I think Lister says something like, "Oh, you know, we we shook on it and all that," and he says, "Yeah, but Lister, you know me, my handshake's less reliable than a plumber's estimate." <laughs> and I don't know why. I'm not no disrespect to any plumbers out there, but I don't know why that just that really just tickled me. I tell you what, I'm I'm, I'm having my bathroom renovated, literally. Uh, right now uh well not li- they're not here right now because it's the evening but they were here earlier on today um so i, I will uh, i'll have to remember to update uh whether or yes. not the estimate was accurate once they come to issue me with the final bill 
yeah, see if that stereotype holds up uh, 20 plus years later. But I yeah. don't know, maybe it was Chris Barry's delivery or, but yeah, that line just really tickled me. So that's that's a potential funniest line. Um, what do you think of this scene? You're not surprised at all that Rimmer's decided to just, you know. No, and it's really hammering home the fact that this is the old Rimmer. This isn't the Rimmer that's yeah. had seven years of character development. This is the Rimmer that is a scheming like snively like will backstab you just out for himself doesn't care about anybody else and is proud of it yeah exactly well almost he seems it he keeps like referring what there's a line near the end as well where like kachansky's having a go at him and he's he's oh you're like you know scummy rat bag and he's just like and that's a bad thing yeah (laughs) because now he's he's got the the disc from the ship so he doesn't need list to to tell him anything anymore to use against yeah uh captain and stuff and he's also got the viruses he's got the sexual magnetism virus which he's oh, used yes. again we get a nice name drop of um yvonne mcgruger McGru- 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 uh, yes. who apparently has been uh working her way through with with rimmer the first 23 pages of the karma sutra yes and if anyone's read the karma sutra there's a there's a lot in that book is all i'll say um but yes, no, I mean, on what you said, though, about this being the old Rimmer, I mean, obviously, you know what's coming and no spoilers as usual. But if this if this is the Rimmer we're getting like from this point in, would you want it to be? I mean, you know, you don't ideally want another seven series for him to get where he was. Surely, then, I mean, would you want it not to be like a quick snap back to the Rimmer of like series six and seven? But you don't want it to be a bit quicker development, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I can't actually remember how much development he goes through in this particular series, in Series 8. Right. And then obviously there's another big massive gap. There's like, after Series 8, in terms of production, there is a 10-year gap between the next series, there which is. is, you know, yeah. how much in-universe time has happened, who knows. Oh, wow. Well. So... There's a question when we get there, I suppose. Um, but uh, when Rimmer leaves, Lister has sneakily swiped a bit of the luck virus on his finger, so he is able to break out of the holding cell and start the first stages of the escape plan. Meanwhile, uh, Crichton, in a rather interesting display, decides to take some of the staff hostage. <laughs> yes, and we get the psychiatrist again from last episode, who yes, was my favourite character brief- last week, I think. Little and, brief cameo. Yeah, and he gets another great line. It's like, okay, let's all remain calm. Fighting is just taking us hostage. <laughs> yeah, isn't that nice? Isn't, isn't that, that nice? nice? Yes. Such a positive outlook on everything. Um, and Crichton, as a guy holding hostages, you know, what are the typical hostage things? Like, you're all gonna, you might be, like, blindfolded or, like, be made to face a wall or something. Um, Crichton instead orders them to pull their trousers down and sit on the toilet. Uh, why is this? And I believe he says, because, so I can laugh at you. Is that what he says? Or yeah, because like this is referencing yeah. back to his conversation with Kachansky earlier, where she says, you know, because you know, he can't, he says he can't um, uh, disobey, you know, his superiors. And so she's like, yes. you've got to find a way to not think of them as your superiors. Imagine them sitting on the toilet and... Are they? Do you think they're superior now? And he's like, no. Yeah. Uh, but he's struggling to do that. And here we are in the situation, in the yes. in the room. So he takes them hostage to literally make them sit on the toilet so that he can actually do it. He can't imagine it. He's just got to actually make them do it. Yeah. What was and going on with that... the psychiatrist's legs? <laughs> yeah, I didn't that quite was, get um... that. He had like this no, white I'd... stuff all over his legs. Um, was it meant to be talcum powder or something? I think that's left open to interpretation, but yeah, I noticed it as well, and I was like, "This could be a variety of things." And it, a typical Red Dwarf fashion, the things, some things you want to have explained doesn't get explained. It's just, it's just sort of there. So I think, yeah, to me, it was like, oh, it can be sort of what the audience wants it to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, it could be talc, it could be other things. <laughs> but yeah, very strange. Um, but sadly, it's all for naught for Crichton, isn't it? He's done this big elaborate hostage thing, and then he just gets um, sedated in the neck, I'm presuming, and it, it just all falls apart for Yeah. Him, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but Lister meets with Kachansky, and they uh, don disguises, like boiler suits and whatnot, uh, and they escape in the lift, to which uh, it's revealed to us that Lister not only swiped a bit of that luck virus, he also swiped a bit of that sexual magnetism and uh you know 
a st- stuff in shoes yeah. from that. It's it's a weird one because she gives him the idea to actually he's she's like oh it's a shame you didn't take some of that sexual magnetism virus too, which kind of implies that she wished he had. It was it was a very sort of grey yeah, the, kind of like the d- d- is she yeah. saying she wants to? I'm not sure. The way it was delivered gave that impression yeah, as well. It was like it wasn't yeah, it wasn't like a sarcastic one. It was more like a oh like a very coy one, like, oh shame you take didn't take a bit of that. Um, yeah. But, but then, then it, of course she jump, it, jumps in once he has taken it and starts, you know, ripping his clothes off. Yes, um, quite and, violent. I, and as I'm sure um one of our previous guests who has mentioned who mentioned this at the time in the episode that we covered with them, um and has done in the comments since, will point out, that's his mum, technically. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it's all a bit... It's all, to, when you, when you time, remember that. Yeah, when you remember that, it's yeah. all a bit weird. <laughs> yes, all a bit strange. It doesn't go on forever, thankfully. It we- it wears off seemingly very the, the luck. Well, the luck virus counteracts it. Probably because she's his mum. It's like, no, this yeah, is not lucky. Yeah, and they're just not telling us. They're hoping us to remember. Like, no, the incest, that's a, that's a no-go, unfortunately. Because I was thinking, how else <laughs> would it be lucky to not get lucky? Oh, and, wow. and, like, it, either it's because they would have got caught do, because they were doing it, or it's because because she's his mum. Yeah. It's just, it's all... Well, or maybe it's, maybe it's just it. because of the questionable consent issues around... <laughs> A yes. sexual magnetism virus. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because, well, the way it's going, Lister can't really, well, seemingly can't stop her. But, I mean, he's the one who took it. So he, you know. Uh, but that, I guess that argument of, like, the uh, the grey area of consent with this virus gets called into question later on in the episode, which I'm sure we'll touch on when we get there. Mm. Um, so after the lift escapade, a Crichton does have his factory set. You know, he has all those nasty emotions cleared out of his body and we get the the data doctor um you know the guy on the screen yeah, played by it robert really llewellyn. made me laugh yes played by robert llewellyn um great as well great expressions just everything like that and um yeah we get Crichton factory settings and it's it's the british accent <laughs> it's the british he's, accent he's just, it's bad they apparently uh, um this is from the imdb trivia thing the producers had considered Hiring um, the David Ross, who was the original Crichton, to do yes, to yeah. voice over in ADR Crichton's lines uh-huh. here, but then they found out that Robert Llewellyn could do a really good imitation of Ross's original accent, so they just let him do it instead. And sure enough, he does. And it's it's weird after so long, isn't it? Hearing that that British accent come back, it's it's so the bizarre. The posh butler. The posh butler. <laughs> But yeah, I found that re- the whole rebooting sequence when he first starts talking is actually quite creepy just because it's all like shre- there's only that one light on him and it's all like shrouded and yeah, mm. very strange. Um, meanwhile, Rimmer's living it up. He's He's gone to that dinner that the captain <laughs> invited him to after taking a, a fair swig of that sexual magnetism virus once again. Yep. And we get some nice references again at a we previous do. episode because he, he in an effort to try and impress again. He's talking about theories about how there might, you know, if you go faster than light, you might get what future echoes, which is of echoes, course, yeah, the future echoes nice episode. And then he there. talks about his theories about a backwards universe uh, from yes, the backwards yeah. episode. So some nice little callbacks. Yeah. yeah, I think they're the best kind of references where if you know it, you know it. But if you didn't know it, they're not, you know, they're not like yeah. crucial to the story. It could just be talking about random things for all anyone else knows. Yes. So. Yeah, best kind of reference. And of course, he's he's got the sexual magnetism virus in his system at this point. So all of the women, um, yes, uh, sit at the table. Um, I like the idea. I gotta gotta give them credit here for making most of the off like senior officers women here because it's pretty much just Captain yeah. Hollister and a table. I was gonna say women. they were all women. Yeah, they? I think so. At yeah, table, apart from the captain. Yeah, no, it's good. It's just a it's just a shame the only thing we see them do really is is hound after him yeah. with his, his sexual magnetism and that yeah whole... I, I have a feeling that the uh the motivation for making them all women was more yes. that than uh, yes unfortunately <laughs> else. but you know we can dream but um yeah and then this whole as we learn you know I, 
the whole thing about Rimmer, like, you know, being hounded and stuff because of this virus, and obviously it's to, like, I guess maybe te- teach him a lesson that it's, you know, it's not all it's cracked up to be, base, I guess. Um... I don't know. I was in two minds about it because obviously the physical comedy the actors show, you know, is is quite humorous. But I think like we raised earlier, it just it raises that whole thing, doesn't it? Of like consent and yeah. Even though Rimmer's even though Rimmer's taken like he, you know, he knowingly took the the virus. You know, the more we see, it seems like it, it is more against his will that this is happening, and there's not seemingly much he can do to prevent it. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, this kind of uh, yeah, but then he did take the virus, and and I know it's for comedy. It's yeah. played, you know, it's played in a very comedic way, and you know, Rimmer Rimmer doesn't come out of it being like, I guess I'm sc- you know, I'm scarred for life. <laughs> no, or, and or let's whatever. face it, it's Rimmer all... is a git anyway, and he's back to full gitness being his original self. So, oh yeah, um, absolutely. I, I kind of actually feel more comfortable with him taking the sexual magnetism virus because it's it's definitely in character for something he would do um as yeah. a selfish type uh person than i am yeah. with lister who's had all this growth who i might have expected to take it back in like series one or two but might have um but would know better know now better by now but then again he has been a you know yeah, yeah. who knows <laughs> I think it's just one of them, isn't it? It's a funny. It depends how you look at it. Yeah, I suppose. but it it's does. It does funny ones. give us some funny situations and some funny comedy, like when he he's dragged off by the various women. He's like, "Oh, I, oh, will you come and help me to get the coffee?" And then yes, yeah, and they all run after and him, and then they forget like... <laughs> to bring the coffee back. Yeah, yes. So whilst Rimmer's um uh, ba- battling all these women, um. Lister and uh, Kachansky rescue Cat, who who refuses to wear his disguise over his coat. Yeah, because can you know, I out here that? once again? The cat is rescued <laughs> off screen. <laughs> yes, just, yes, he always just appears. The, he just appears, and it's always the same with the cat. You know, he did. We we didn't get to see him revived from um from stasis at the beginning of series six. Was it? Uh, yeah. He's always the one that kind of like there. Uh, you see what happens to. The others and then you're like oh yeah, yeah that also happened to cat but we don't need to see it yeah <laughs> bit of a shame hope I, I want this to change eventually this this needs to stop this needs to stop um they find Crichton with his british accent um and determine that well he's not you know he's not going to come with them at this point but they need to get a disguise because they're they're, they're being hunted down and as soon as i saw the uh <laughs> the mop heads and all and the teeth and all that we got a Dwayne Dibley reference yeah this this episode the is chock full of references isn't it this one I think is obviously more on the nose because like if you didn't if you hadn't seen those Dwayne Dibley episodes because obviously mm. the la- in the laugh track everyone's like you know cheering and I think there's a bit of applause at one point but I guess if you if you didn't know about that it, it's still funny but I guess you'd be like what what's all the What's the hype about, I guess? Yeah. Well, you wouldn't know who the Dibley family was. I don't know. I'm not saying it's a problem. You know, it's funny. I loved it. But yeah, it's one of those references that becomes more, I guess, entangled into what's going on, that you need to know what it is to really get the maximum amount of the joke, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if Cat wasn't funny enough, when the others do it, <laughs> oh, goodness me. They are the um, Dibley family. The Dibley family. I wish they all got names. Yeah. Like, you know, like, uh, but I don't think they mention that, do they? Um, I think I think Cat name checks Dwayne once, but yeah, Kachansky and Lister don't get names, which is a shame. Also, how does um, how does Kachansky know? Because it's actually her idea, isn't it? Is it her idea? No, was it his idea? No, it's his idea. No, it's, it is Cat's? It's Cat's idea. idea to do the but Dibley she, family. She clocks yeah. on. She's the one that says Dibley first, I think. I just remember. Uh, was thinking, it? I thought. Okay. I just remember because th- he turns around with it. Oh, doesn't he know. say the Dibley family? Maybe she does. But there was something in it. I can't remember what it was, but there was something that made me think, hold on, how does she know what the Dibleys are? Because she seems to, yeah. she definitely seems to go along with it like she knows all about it. But like, she hasn't encountered unless, it. Unless she has a Dwayne Dibley from her dimension maybe. or maybe. universe. Because there's got to be a Dwayne Dibley everywhere, surely. Yeah, maybe. That's, that's true. Um. But then they, you know, they're doing their disguise. It's going well. They're all computer programmers because you know all computer programmers in the nineties had big teeth and not a very good sense of style, as was nerd pastiches back then. Um, 
But then Crichton almost rats them out until he clocks that he might have seen what he calls Wayne Wibley uh, mm-hmm. before. And now this, you know, this whole remembrance thing and he gets his emotions and then he's like, I'm back. I'm like, I did, you know, I did want the current Crichton back because like, like we said with Rimmer, you know, if, if Crichton had to go through all that again over like this season or more, you know, that would be a bit like, come on, like we've done this. So I am glad he's back, but it all just seems very like, and now I'm back. Do you know, it just seems very, very quick. Yeah, I, I didn't mind how quick it was, to be honest. Um, I, yeah, it kind of, I can mm, see what you mean, I, but I, I didn't, it didn't bother me. And I thought fair. it was quite that's funny, the, the faces he was pulling. He was basically, so as, as the moment of like, uh, of him regaining his uh, emotions and his personality back again, it was very yeah. much framed like he was um, having quite a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. Oh, he was having a great time. I don't know. Maybe I put it like I would have liked maybe for him to to be back to his former self, maybe in part three. Yeah, like, just maybe. Just eke it out a little bit. Because it seems like he, 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 they make this big thing of him going back to factory settings, like, you know, clearing out all those emotions and it being this this big deal. And then literally five minutes later, it's like, oh, yeah, all that's just all of that is literally just... Re- I don't know. Just for me, it seemed a bit. It happened a bit too soon and a bit too quick. Yeah. But maybe if the, it had happened in part three, it might have. But that's just me, anyway. But I'm I'm pedantic like that. Um. But yeah. So Crichton is back and he's bad, as he said, which made me chuckle because it just seems like. <laughs> but not. I know he not means too like bad. about his corruption. Bad within parameters. Not too bad. Yeah. It's bad just, within I know it was about that. It just, that's it. It just sounded like a bad eighties catchphrase. You're like I'm back. And I'm bad. Like it just <laughs> it made me chuckle. Um, but meanwhile, after Rimmer comes back from encounter number whatever this is, um, the captain slowly starts to explain what the plan was and actually reveals that the um, all the gang aren't actually escaping. They are in AR. Uh, which, yeah. Which freaks Rimmer out because <laughs> he asks the question, oh, well, if anyone made like a secret arrangement or something that would be uh and he doesn't even finish it he's like oh sorry i've uh i've left the iron on <laughs> which made me laugh because it's like you know it's the most bog standard excuse but somehow in that scenario it just really works because you can tell he, he he's not bothered about making up an elaborate excuse he just wants to get out of there yeah i did wonder when where the change happened though because for rimmer rimmer went to visit lister in the cell um, yes. And Lister escapes like seconds after he left the room. So if if Rimmer is actually in the real world and they're in the right. simulation, when did that changeover happen? Like I don't. I think he, he was in room? it. There was. I think no. I think Rimmer was in that simulation with him when he visited him. Because isn't it in the first scene the captain gives him the letter and he licks it? Oh, maybe. Was that in the version you watched, or? Yeah, no, no, it was. You're yeah. right. But I can't I remember what he said was in it. That, gave... Do you think that had the psychotropic drugs? It, I think it must have done because I, what? Well, I don't think they explain it fully, but I'm guess because when they come out of AR for real, for real, which will you know the real t- Rimmer is there with them, mm. like in the AR machine. So my Wait. my head cannon because they don't. Ex- they... So the first time they come out of it, you know when Rimmer's realised it and he he runs out. Um, yeah. Oh, no, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. To, I'm jumping ahead to part three. Sorry. Yeah, you're jumping ahead um, to part three. I sorry, I'm jumping, yeah. I'm jumping. I'm <laughs> jumping. Sorry, sorry. Um, but but yeah, in answer to that question, I believe Rimmer is in the simulation with when he visits Lister. Okay. Basically. Okay. For reasons that will make more sense when you hear part three. <laughs> so it's because I was, I've gonna, I was just about them. to say, let well, we'll have to wait to part three to find out. But I, I think you already know. <laughs> So. Yes, it's, it's only so for context. I've watched both of these today because originally we were going to do both, but we've had to change it to one. So I'm uh, that was me crossing my wires there. But yeah, we'll elaborate more on that in part three. But in part two, Rimmer is freaked out. He's like, he well, he's basically thinks he's been rumbled. So he sprints on out of there. Um, and uh, we, oh yeah, that's it. We cut back to all of the women no, he in runs... the corridor are still very attracted to him aren't they oh yeah so he... it's still in and effect he's yeah struggling to maintain his own urges so he's mm. he wants something to to calm himself down so that he doesn't take you know 
go go off with these women, I guess. Uh, yes, absolutely. So, um, what what's that drug he takes again? Do they say? I don't know what it was. He injects himself with something in this kind of groinal area. I didn't. Oh, clock. again, they might. I think the captain says what it is in part three, but I won't. I can't remember what it is, and I won't delve into it. Okay. But yes, he does inject himself, and he also smashes himself in the groin with a hammer. Yeah. Um, which I don't know. About, it gave me a little. I have this thing. I think a lot of men have this thing. You'll have to let me know in the comments. I won't dwell on it. But when you see like other men get physically hit in that area, it always makes me like wince a bit. Yeah. I guess it's because it's that thing of ooh, you you know you what that feels that like, and it's yeah, going ooh, that would yeah. hurt. It doesn't seem to hurt Rimmer, so I'm guessing no. that's the, the sedative or whatever he was injecting himself with has taken effect enough to make that not hurt. Yes, but what does it does affect is uh, his walk. <laughs> yes, Which, and I, uh... <laughs> I did find it very funny that you know he's walking down and like can't control his feet. It's almost like he's drunk. Um. And he's veering from side to side, kind of his legs are going all over the place. And the women are still like, oh, hi. Hi, Rima. Yeah, that was great. How even though he's doing that, they're all like, oh, hello. Like, <laughs> just You're so sexy. Really good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And things Speaking like that. of walks as well, the others adopt their Dibley family disguises fully with Crichton this time, teeth and all. And they do what I wrote, it reminded me of like a Beatles-esque walk, you know, when they all came with the mop tops all coming out in a line and turning yeah, their Yeah, they've got a kind of down, 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 down music. Going yeah, on, like swagger I think music. it went into slight then, slow motion as well. It did, yeah. And we um, we see some scutters, scutters for the first yay. time in forever. Yeah, and they look slightly upgraded or they look a little more, little more fancy. I, d- I didn't notice, but you're them. probably right. Oh, it could be my. They just look slightly different, but for the better. And I was like, I like this design very much. But um, Lister says, hey, if you've got to do it, you've got to look the part. So, of course, then they come out with their mop tops and teeth, which is quite humorous considering it's on a Dibbly scutter. scutters. Dibbly scutters. And just like that, the episode ends. Um, Not really a cliffhanger moment as such, I guess. You know, it's not like a moment of impending doom or anything. Well, it really, kind is of it? is, because like... we know... We know that they're in a simulation now. They think they're not. They're captain. Yeah. So there's kind of, there is a bit of tension, a bit of like jeopardy there. I suppose so, yeah. I don't know, I guess like, yeah, it just didn't feel like a, I mean, a cliffhanger, a cliffhanger can be anything, of course. I guess just it didn't feel as like, um, I don't know what the word is. It just sort of ended for me. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It didn't, I, but that's just me personally. Still, it was all right though. Not too bad. And yeah, we get a to be continued title and we must wait for for part three, uh, which we'll delve into next week. But we must do our regular segment. So, Phil, who was your favorite character in part two? I'm going to go with Rimmer, I think. Nice. His scene with the captain yeah. uh, was really good. Uh, all of the stuff at the dinner. Uh, and I, I kind of enjoy seeing him being the smarmy original Rimmer <laughs> yet again when he betrayed. You yeah. know, he's just got lots of funny scenes. He does. He does. My, uh, mine was also Rimmer. I feel this is like, you know, the first time since early in Series 7 that he's he's really been given a lot of the spotlight. And, you know, Chris Barry as ever is on top form physically in terms of his delivery. You know, he, he is this character. He knows this character. Um, but I put closely followed by the Data Doctor. Oh, Robert okay. Llewellyn. He just, that little, that little bit just made me laugh quite a lot. With how silly it was, um, but what about your funniest moment in this episode? Um, I, th- I think I might give it to the dinner scene. Just the whole scene in general, I found that quite funny and, and mixture of like his interactions with the captain there again, but also the the women dragging him off effectively to or chasing after him. Um, yeah, and that whole bit. What about you? Yeah. Mine, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to the handshake joke that I mentioned. Yeah, it just it tickled me in a way that nothing else in the episode did. Uh, I don't know what that says about me and my attitude towards plumbers. Again, no disrespect. You're all great. You do a great job, but that line just tickled me. So I'm gonna give it to the handshake gag. So out of ten scutters, then we have scutters back, of course. But how many scutters out of ten would you give this one? I'm giving this a, a probably. <sighs> 
Less than last week, I think. I didn't enjoy this Because last week as you much. gave it a... Was it a nine? I did. Yeah, I thought it was a very one. strong yes, start last yeah. week. I just didn't have quite as much fun with this. There were some moments mm-hmm. in it where I was uh, going, like, cringing a little bit at yes. some of the humor and, and some of the directions they were going in. There were, of course, uh-huh. some other... Re- there were some really funny bits as well, um, as there yeah, were yeah. Um So I think I'm going to give it a seven out of 10 another okay. another sin this episode commits is there is mm. woefully little of holly in fact there is just a voice i was about to holly. mention that just one little school, line yeah. and you just hear his one voice little line. See where's holly we just got him back we want more holly that seems to happen doesn't it we said part one kachansky wasn't really in it and now in part two holly it's almost like they can't balance everyone mm. but i mean we'll see in part well I, I can't remember in part three if they all get it well we'll see in part three if everyone gets an equal share but yeah well, i'm gonna give it a 7.5 so a little over what you gave it but yeah i think it's a bit of a i think i gave part one an eight or an 8.5 if memory mm. serves so yeah a bit of a step down at most points similar to you to be honest frighteningly little holly some moments that made me cringe a bit or a bit like, ee, even though it was of the time. Not all the humour landed. Some bits I wasn't, a bit like, as I say, Crichton coming back to himself pretty quickly for me, or pretty, you know, almost instantaneously. So, yeah, I guess middle parts in trilogies are arguably sometimes the hardest ones to pull off, really, because I guess yeah. if you've you've got to maintain the setup and build to the finale. And again, like, the, the cliffhanger for me was just sort of there. It didn't, for me, it didn't really propel me to think, oh, what's going to happen in part three for me at least i'm I'm sure it worked for some but yeah 7.5 for this one well there you go we both agreed it was a strong start bit of a still good but not as not as good middle so it'll be interesting to see what we make of a part three next week if it'll pull it all off in the conclusion but you'll have to wait and see so before we go then as usual phil where can people who are listening check you out and your work best place is my youtube channel where you can where i talk about all sorts of geeky pop culture it's just my name philip hawkins philip with one l about doctor who this podcast goes up there the mcu all mm-hmm. sorts of things like that so check out that uh, what about yourself? Absolutely. For me, uh, you can check out my channel as well, Adam Martin with a Y on YouTube, just lots of pop culture things of different types. Uh, Twitter is Adam Martin AMTV if you want to follow me for daily ramblings. And we also have a, a, a Twitter for the podcast, which is at All Dead Dave Pod. If you want to keep up to date with uh, information on this show, some Red Dwarf memes, information like that, all that good stuff. And we also have a merch store. Um, mm-hmm. which uh, I'm sure a link will be in the description of the video if you're on YouTube and probably it might be on the audio versions as well. But you can you can get T-shirts, you can get mugs. Uh, what are the other things I'm missing? You can a get hoodie. You can a get hoodie. hoodie. I think yeah. you can get a tote I mean, bag. You can. At the time we're recording this, it's pretty cold. So, you know, you gotta you got to stay warm. So you gotta, yeah. you got to have that all, hoodie. All of uh, them, are basically the design is our cartoon versions of ourselves. Um, with our yes. sh- with the show logo on. Absolutely. So please do go and check that out if you're interested. And yeah, you can join us next week where we'll be chatting about episode three of series eight, which is back in the back in the red. Or back is it back to the red or back, back in, in the, the red? red. Keep, that's it. Back in the red, part three, the the exciting conclusion of this trilogy. So thank you very much for joining us. Leave a like on the video if you're watching on YouTube if you enjoyed it, and let us know in the comments as well. We appreciate your feedback. And yeah, until the next one, see you next time. Bye-bye.